This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. So we'll start the video with an overview of the two mechanisms. The SN1 mechanism is a two-step mechanism. In the first step, the bond between the carbon atom and the halogen undergoes heterolytic bond fission, which results in the formation of a carbocation intermediate, which we can see here on the right. In the second step, the nucleophile reacts with the carbocation to form the product. The SN2 mechanism is a one-step mechanism. The nucleophile is attracted to the carbon atom that's bonded directly to the halogen. This results in the formation of an unstable transition state, which then goes on to form the product. So next we look at each of these mechanisms in more detail. So let's begin with the first step of the SN1 mechanism. In the first step, the bond between this carbon atom and the halogen undergoes heterolytic bond fission. This results in the formation of a carbocation intermediate and a halide ion, which is known as a leaving group. The carbocation is stabilized by the electrons from the three carbon atoms, which is known as the inductive effect. In the second step of the mechanism, the nucleophile forms a bond with the carbocation. Note the use of a curly arrow which shows a movement of a pair of electrons from the oxygen atom. The nucleophile uses this lone pair of electrons to form a bond with the carbocation. This results in the formation of the product which is a tertiary alcohol. An important point to note is that the carbocation has a trigonal planar geometry. Because of this geometry, the nucleophile can bond from either side of the carbocation. This has important implications for the stereochemistry of the SN1 mechanism. This is covered in more detail in a later video. Another important point is the presence of the three methyl groups in the tertiary halogenoalkane. These bulky alkyl groups cause steric hindrance. This steric hindrance prevents the nucleophile from attacking on the opposite side to the leaving group, as we'll see in the SN2 mechanism. So moving on to the SN2 mechanism, which is a one-step mechanism. The nucleophile approaches the halogenoalkane on the opposite side to the leaving group, which is known as a backside attack. This curly arrow shows a movement of a pair of electrons from the nucleophile to this carbon atom. The nucleophile is attracted to this carbon atom because of its partial positive charge. We then have the formation of the transition state. In this transition state we can see that the nucleophile and the leaving group are both weakly bonded to this carbon atom. Note that these are not regular covalent bonds and they're shown using dashed lines. This takes us on to our product which is a primary alcohol. We also have the leaving group which in this reaction is a chloride ion. Next, we'll look at the reaction kinetics of each mechanism. The rate of reaction of the SN1 mechanism depends on the concentration of the halogenoalkane only. The 1 in SN1 stands for unimolecular. Here we have an example rate expression. From this, we can see that the rate of reaction depends on the concentration of the halogenoalkane only. The order of reaction is first order with respect to the halogenoalkane. For the SN2 mechanism, the rate of reaction depends on both the concentration of the halogenoalkane and the nucleophile. The 2 in SN2 stands for bimolecular. And here we have an example rate expression. From this we can see that the rate of reaction depends on both the concentration of the halogenoalkane and the nucleophile. The orders of reaction are first order with respect to both the halogenoalkane and the nucleophile. We'll end the video by looking at energy profiles for the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. So we'll start with the SN1 mechanism which is a two-step mechanism. As we saw previously, step 1 involves the formation of the carbocation intermediate. It is the step with the highest activation energy. Therefore, it is the rate determining step. Step 2 is the step with the lowest activation energy. It involves the attack by the nucleophile on the carbocation intermediate. 
And finally, we have an energy profile for the SN2 mechanism. As we can see, the SN2 mechanism involves the formation of a transition state with both the nucleophile and leaving group weakly bonded to the carbon atom, which we can see here.